Welcome back. We are still keeping our eyes on Georgia as we wait for Trump and more of his co-defendants to surrender at the Atlanta jail you see here. Out of the 19 total co-defendants, a whopping eight of them are lawyers, people who swore to uphold the Constitution and to follow the law. People like Rudy Giuliani, a formerly prolific prosecutor and the man who once appeared on the cover of Time as America's mayor. But now, the first thing you see when you search Rudy Giuliani on Google is his new mugshot from Fulton County. Here he is yesterday, just after he was booked. Fannie Willis will go down in American history as having conducted one of the worst attacks on the American Constitution ever when this case is dismissed. I am being indicted yeah, because I'm a lawyer. Joining us now, NBC's Ken Delanian, and back with us, Barbara McQuaid. Ken, it's so unusual to see even just one lawyer charged, and now we see eight. Yeah, Anna, it's historic. Uh, historians and legal scholars will be studying this case for years uh, because this was essentially a, a conspiracy, an alleged conspiracy involving the legal system to subvert uh, the political system. And it required lawyers in order to make, to, to, to make it work in terms of bringing these allegedly bogus uh, claims into court and then trying to subvert the lawful transfer of power with the false elector scheme and other kinds of schemes. And what's so remarkable about these this group of lawyers is that they were some of them were quite prominent in addition to Rudy Giuliani well respected people in their fields for years before they suddenly turned and adopted these bizarre theories that have now landed them in legal trouble I mean even Jeffrey Clark for example who's gotten a lot of ridicule he was a lower level environmental justice department official he went to Harvard he graduated from Georgetown Law people are asking what happened to these people Sidney Powell who uh, uh, you know presented a lot of the craziest theories that didn't hold up about election fraud was for for years considered a normal attorney uh, and what's so interesting about all these lawyers is that many of them are either either have been disciplined by their local bar associations or are subject right now to disciplinary proceedings so their own professions are essentially disowning them and saying this is not how you practice law and now they're facing potential serious criminal penalties on them. Barbara Ken points out these are people who really should know better. Do judges treat lawyers more harshly compared to regular citizens when they go to trial? Well, during the trial, no. They will get the same kinds of due process and presumptions of innocence as any other defendant. But I think at sentencing, there can be extra harshness in the penalties for lawyers. For example, in the federal system, there is an enhancement under the sentencing guidelines for abuse of a position of trust. And lawyers do have that position of trust in society. They also have an ethical responsibility to use those talents, those skills, and their license to advance the public good. And so when Rudy Giuliani says, I'm being charged for practicing law, that's absolute nonsense. He's being charged because he is alleged to have lied in public forums, to have pressured people to change the outcome of an election by illegal means. Those are the crimes with which he is charged. He is not charged simply for representing someone who lost an election. Barbara, I want to just take a walk down memory lane and play some sound from another Trump lawyer, his former fixer, Michael Cohen. Listen. He doesn't give you questions. He doesn't give you orders. He speaks in a code. And I understand the code because I've been around him for a decade. So, Barb, as a lawyer, what's expected of you when you have a client who seems to thrive in legal gray areas or who acts like Trump and seems to speak in code? Yeah, a lawyer has a responsibility to be clear about what they are communicating and what they are going to do. And so it may be that that's the way the mob boss works and underlings understand the orders and they go out and do the dirty work. But a lawyer has to be above board at all times. And it's the lawyer's job to keep the client on the up and up. And so I don't think uh, that strategy is going to prevail here. You keep all of us on the up and up. Barbara McQuaid, thank you so much for being here. Kendallanian, thank you.